Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are here tonight to discuss uh, um, YouTube. Um, would you please uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit of your background? All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Carl. Uh, my username is Black Sheep, and uh, I'm an amateur game designer uh, slash hobbyist. Uh, that's that's uh, that's sort of my background. And uh, I was. You know, on YouTube for a while now, for a couple of years, and then I, I started to realize that there were some issues with YouTube, and I thought that this whole thing surrounding it is why we're here, here to discuss uh, an idea and a proposition that I have to maybe fix, uh, maybe fix YouTube, because uh, my background with with gaming was to to play the games and to just see if I can maybe fix them or rebalance them, and so I'm fascinated about the game design process, and I think it's fascinating, and I love it, but. It, it, there came to a point where I thought, okay, well, why can't I apply the same thing to, to YouTube? And uh, that's 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 why we're here. I, I did the, I, I just came up with something, and I thought maybe it's pretty good, and I should share it. Mm. So, uh, uh, as Carl already mentioned, uh, we're here to discuss uh, YouTube um, and uh, potential problems you, YouTube has. Um, I would just ask you, uh, why do you think YouTube needs fixing? When I did, the f first first of all, it was just like I said, um, I, I spent some time on YouTube. Anyone who spent any time on YouTube or all, all the content creators who, who've been on YouTube now for a while realized that things have started going, you know, started going backwards. Uh, the main the main thing was probably when when I saw uh, Patreon keep popping up everywhere. Everybody was referring to Patreon, Patreon. That was how they were making their money. But a couple of years ago, that was not the case at all. Patreon would, you know, didn't even exist or no one. It, it wasn't an issue, and it, it just became more of a uh, the go-to. But that's incorrect because it doesn't make sense. If you think about it, the Patreon is then a third-party service. It cuts out it cuts out uh, the YouTube, which essentially is footing the bill for all for everything. Uh, we are using the platform YouTube, but YouTube gets cut out of the financial loop, so to speak. So it it just just doesn't add up. So coming from the background that I have, like oh oh, I, ch I would challenge myself and uh, uh, role playing the games, and I thought maybe I can, you know, maybe I can come up with something that can fix mm -hmm. them. I took the same approach with YouTube, and so I so I went to do, and did research. I looked in and saw, okay, is this really a problem? Am I just am I overreacting? But the more I dug into this issue, the more I realized, the more people agreed with me. The more content creators came up and said they don't know about their future. They're going to have to close down. They're going to have to look into other ventures. They can't do it on YouTube anymore. They have to swap platforms. There were serious comment discussions about like what's going on with YouTube, which never happens. I mean, the comments section, come on, you guys know, like they do whatever. You know, they're talking nonsense. So. Uh, they're very rarely serious, and this was like a serious issue. And people were like, "No one knows. You know, no one, no one knew." And the more I dug into it, I just realized it was getting more and more serious. Like, the, the probably the most shocking one was when someone referred me to to Vidme. There was a there was a, a, a YouTuber, a content creator, who said, "Okay, no, they're uploading as a backup to YouTube because they don't know about YouTube their videos to Vidme." But then I thought, okay, great, another site that's like uh, YouTube, uh, this will be perfect for my research. I'll go dig in and realize, okay, how are they doing and how did they do their financial system? And so I looked into it, well, guess what? They shut down uh, December last year. And then the, the, the co-founder co wrote a very, in, uh, very informative piece uh, on, on describing like why exa what exactly went wrong and so on. But the, the main premise was it was a financial it was a financial problem. They didn't have the financial means to continue. It wasn't profitable. It wasn't self-sustaining. They just didn't. They, they they weren't able to make it. And it was just shocking. The more I dug into it, the more I realized how serious this issue was. Mm -hmm. The fact that YouTube never or Google refuses to release YouTube's um, revenue, like how much YouTube's actually making, how much they spend on YouTube. So it became clear that uh, they're running at a loss. YouTube is running at a loss. And so Google is paying for everything, but until what point, right? There has to be a point where it's like just they can't, they can't pay them anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's just, oh, okay, that's it, it's over now. And then that means you, uh, YouTube's gonna shut down. So as, yeah. rich, as rich as Google is, you'd think that, well, at some point it has to change. It can't just keep, keep continuing like this. So, um Obviously, you know, no one wants YouTube to end, and uh, uh, we're here tonight to discuss that. So, 
you obviously have a solution in mind for YouTube. Yes, I do. Would you uh, please take us through your, your solution in a nutshell, just to give us a broad idea of what you're looking at doing? All right, okay. It's basically uh, it's a revised system of everything that's, that YouTube has currently. It's just changed systems that YouTube has now and, introduce, and introducing a few new ones. So there's, uh, there's seven in total. The main one is the biscuit model, which is the refinancing uh, model of, of YouTube. It, the, the, overall, the overall branch of it is that it's going to, that it's going to involve uh, its own economy. Okay, but we'll get, in, we'll get into that. So it's a, revised, it's a revised payment model for how YouTube is going to work because the whole subscription thing um, for YouTube Red doesn't work as well. It works for Netflix, but it won't work for YouTube. So essentially, it's a revised system that works for YouTube specifically. Then uh, next, we have the, the copyright issues. We've had uh, massive problems with the copyright issues where they just get flagged and, and you know, it's like, well, this is copyrighted content. How are we going to organize that or sort that through? Came up with a system of that. Uh, we'll, we'll get through that. So it's a revised system on how that works. There's a revised flag system, how you can flag videos and so on. It was a good idea from, from YouTube initially. But they went about it the wrong way that anyone can just flag and it was all over the place and people were just freaking about it. remember the youtube heroes thing yeah i know so it was it was an interesting idea and it sort of works but not really it can be done better so revised system of that is a revised advertising of how advertising works now on youtube the advertisers aren't, aren't really happy they like you know that's where the whole money problem comes in because their main focus is their main revenue is oh just from ads but that it, it's just not sustainable. It just it, it's not working. It's just not working. So I try to look at that and see if this, there's a possibility for advertising in the future. How is that going to change? All right. So a revised system of that. There is a more revised punishment system. Uh, right now, YouTube has the three strikes and deletion system, and I think they they can do better. I think I've, I've come up with something that that covers that covers more ground. Then there's the uh, age restriction uh, system, like how the age restriction works. It's right now on YouTube, it's literally an on and off switch. It's like, oh, 18 plus our content, no ads, or just off, which is, that, oh, come on, that doesn't cover, that doesn't cover the nuance of, you know, uh, age restriction and the different ages. It's, it's not, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's not good. So I, I tried to come up with a revised system with that. And uh, also, I um, uh, looked into, uh, let's see, oh yes, the revised tag system as well. The revised tag system is a recommendation system that YouTube has now, because they have this, they have the, everything's all automatic or like manual, right? So it's like either the algorithm just spits out whatever it wants for you and you sort of go on this loop that where it just covers the popular types of whatever video you're interested in, so you don't get it's it's too it's either or it's just completely concrete uh, manual where you type in everything specifically in your little search bar. So I came up with something that's in between the two. So it's a, it's a revised tag system. And the last one would be the flag system. Oh, that's that's as good as you yeah, said. Yeah, I believe that's all of it. Yeah, so uh, we're going to be spending the next uh, half an hour to an hour of your time going through all of these uh, different systems. Uh, we, we trust it will be informative and that at the end of it, uh, YouTube has something to take away from uh, the proposed fix. So, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for listening. Um, hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're uh, back here at our uh, uh, forum on how to fix YouTube. Um, in the previous video, we discussed basically who Carl was and uh, how we're going to go about fixing YouTube. So, the first section we're going to talk about is the biscuit model. This is basically the model of the financing behind YouTube. So um, we'd like to start by possibly discussing the existing structure of YouTube. And uh, Carl, as I understand it, YouTube is currently working on an advertising-based uh, financial yes. model. Yeah, that's so true. could you explain that to us a bit? How yeah. does that work? That's true. All right, so the current way, uh, as far as I understand it, uh, is that YouTube focuses on that it's just advertising. Right, that's where they get their, their, their money from. This makes sense because uh, Google uh, itself is the parent company of YouTube, right? And they they focus completely on advertising. So it makes sense that they had an uh, approach from okay, advertising is going to be the focus. 
and it, and it works for Google. It's very, very lucrative and it makes sense because they have like the different search rates and whatever they give you priority and like they have all sorts of things about like ad choices and it's a long complicated system, but it's basically uh, focused on like results. Google, you know, it's result, uh, it's re result related. Like as you search, they give you better results. So if you, if you give them money or they put in your ad mm -hmm. here or there. So it, that's a guaranteed system that works, right? But for YouTube, it's a little different because of it, because of the fact that they're like, okay, well, we'll just put ads on the, on the, on the video content itself. But there's so many issues and so many layers to that, that it just doesn't work. The main problem being, of course, is if you can somehow block these ads, which are, you know, banner ads to the side, ads on the, the video itself, if you can isolate that code and get rid of it, then simple. Then you have no ads you can watch YouTube for literally for free then, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to have anything. And that's a huge problem. At, at the beginning, it wasn't such a big problem because I think not many people knew about the ad block and that it was a, that it was a, 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 a app that's almost ne necessary. And I think also the ads became more and more. Mm -hmm. Like as YouTube became more lucrative, they added more uh, adverts and then people wanted the solution. And now because of the fact that it's not an app, it's not a standalone app, it's a browser you have at the browser then then you load the website so the problem comes in if you you can load in any sort of add-on or extension to the to your a web browser that can just cancel out the ad so then then it became a huge thing and i think at the, at the beginning when youtube was sort of coming up it was okay people didn't really know about it it wasn't that big of a problem but now youtube is just too big it's just become too many people were there too many people got involved big advertisers came in and they jumped in and then they realized all these problems started coming up. They weren't there before. Yeah. First of all, ad block just became that's you must have it. Like it's not a thing about oh no, you can sort of you 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 know you have a, a user experience without uh, without any um, problems if you just view it with all the ads. There's just too many, and it's in the way, and it cuts the film or your video in pieces where it's sort of just in the middle. It's what you know there's, yeah. no, there's no need and it also it, it also seems uh that um the the advertisers don't really have control over where their adverts are showing either so a, vi a video might be marked as uh, being monetized but uh, let's say coca-cola is advertising on youtube they sign a contract with youtube then their advert might be put on an, a video that they don't agree with so it seems that the uh the control that the client is advertising on YouTube has is, is limited in that way. So that's also a problem actually in the structure. There's a huge, that's a huge issue. Because think about it, it makes sense if you apply it in the real world. Yeah. This is how YouTube approaches the advertisers. They say, listen, look at our stats, look at our numbers, look at our views. It's the biggest billboard in the world. There's no way you don't want your ad there. But when it comes to imp implementation, it's not like a huge banner at the side of a highway. Yeah. Where you know where the highway is, you know, where people are going to drive, you know what it's going to be. Here, it's all it's all based on this algorithm that they decide and then just puts the vi the, <coughs> the ads on wherever. And it's yeah. very complicated, and you don't know where it's going. It almost feels like no one has control over it. Yeah. And that can't happen because you don't have that control. You don't have the guarantee, and without the guarantee, the advertisers just lose the confidence. That's what happened with the with the apocalypse and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's all these. There's no control. Where is it going? What's happening? And it, 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 it also seems as though um, if the advertiser like Coca-Cola, for example, like I mentioned earlier, if he then does get onto a channel that, that, that he assumes fits his brand, that's also not to say that the people who he's trying to reach are going to necessarily watch that video. So there's, there's another barrier there almost. So there's, there's no way for uh, Coca-Cola to know that they are actually reaching their right target audience, which yeah. is actually another problem. Yeah, so it's almost like yeah, no. just uh, you know throwing money at something and hoping, yeah, 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 yeah. hoping they get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not focused advertising at all. It's just random. It's completely random, and that that really that's horrible. <laughs> that that's not. Uh, so that's very unideal. So I guess the 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 bigger question, and this is why we've been discussing this now, is how do we 
how do we go about fixing the YouTube um, revenue issue? I think the, the main problem is right now uh, YouTube has the approach of listen, the ads, the ad companies, they have the money and the financial means to support YouTube. Yes. Right. Um, we have to rely on them. So they've relied on them in the past and that has worked. But now in uh, working, going to into the future, that's no longer the case. The advertisers are just not confident enough and YouTube has just grown to such a size there that a, a handful of rich uh, advertising companies can just not support such a giant platform mm -hmm. by themselves. They just can't. Yes. Especially with now the concerns that we've raised, they don't have full confidence. So Correct. even if people still feel YouTube is a worthwhile investment as far as advertising is concerned, they're not going to go all in. They're not going to go all in. So uh, they definitely know about uh, the big issues like ad block and where the content is going up. Definitely by now. Yes. I mean these issues are well, large enough that you know news reported on them. You know, like popular news sources reported on them. There's no way that they don't know. So what we have to do is we have to look at, we need the financial means. We are not going to get it from the ad, uh, advertisers. We need another source of financing. So who can, who can finance YouTube? It's very simple, all the users. Now, at first it doesn't make sense because it's like, okay, so that you mean everybody has to pay for YouTube now? Yes and no. But the important part is to remember that collectively, because there's so many, 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 many millions and even billions of, of YouTube users and viewers, collectively, their financial resources are actually greater than the small, very rich advertising company. Yes. The potential is there. The proof of this is in Patreon, because that's, that's now been the number one source of finance for many content creators. Mm -hmm. The fact that they can still make content is thanks to their Patreon account. Correct. So this, this proved to me when I was trying to figure out a, a possible solution is that, listen, switching over from the advertisers to the audience is a correct move. It's already happening. So why, why not push that further? Why not make that the focus? Yes. So um, how, do, how do you implement that though? How do you, how do you go from having um, a, a small group of, let's say between, 10 and 100 uh, advertising companies financing YouTube to having the mass, the masses fund YouTube. What is the, what is the key? What is the, what is the vehicle that drives that concept home? Um, fortunately, YouTube has the first part down. They have the exposure. YouTube has the exposure and they have the product to sell. They have the content that people are already invested in YouTube. So they have the audience, they have the people already invested, they have that confidence. And this is important. And this is the only reason Google has kept paying into YouTube, paying into YouTube at a loss, knowing that, listen, this huge audience is going to pay off someday. You know, we're going to make money. We just need to figure it out. It will, it will work. It will work. It will work. And so they have part one. They have the big audience. They have everybody there. That's fine. So how do you switch it over? How do you convince people? You just have to come up with a model that's fair and that everybody can accept and realize this one works better, this makes more sense. You need to, you need to come up with a better, better model and a better system. So they're trying the YouTube red angle, but it's not Netflix. It's not, it won't, it won't, it doesn't function. YouTube isn't Netflix and it won't function the same way. So you, I came up with a, with a solution that is actually rather straightforward. Uh, it's, a, it's a digital currency system. So how it works is that YouTube will have its own independent like market or economy and then the videos will compete and the content creators will compete by setting prices to their videos. They themselves will set a price to a video and then the, the, the viewers will then either say, yes, we want that, uh, I'm willing to pay that much for a video or yes or no. The whole system is called the biscuit model because it's just, it's just easy to to use, I mean, I don't want to use YouTube coins or something or credits or so the biscuits make more sense. And it's, it's called the biscuit model and it's been used before, but it will work specifically very well in the YouTube environment because it works on mass independently created content that's all over the place. So having, giving sort of like a medium for them all to compete, right? Like a price is perfect that, that introduces the capitalism model that we have 
in the real world. Yeah, I was going to say it's, yeah. almost, it's, it's, it's almost like you're you're bringing capitalism and the free market economy onto the YouTube YouTube platform. Exactly. Yeah. So in essence, a uh, YouTube creator could create uh, a video and decide that that video is worth uh, X amount of biscuits, and then the community coming to the platform would then in the end of the day, be the arbiter of whether that video is worth that content yes, yes, or not. Yes, yes, yeah. And if it's not, they'll move on to the next guy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so it, it, it's almost as if it, as if it fosters this this um, environment of, of of pushing creativity and pushing standards and making sure that depending on your standard, your price is also well. Yes, yes. Because yes, if it isn't, absolutely. you're going to yeah, be yeah, kicked yeah. out of the system. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's it's the competition that we, we the, that we have the system that we have in society today because. Correct. It has flaws, but it's the best one that we have so far. Yes. The most important part is that it's not dominated by one individual force. Yes. Like it's not dominated by the content creators. It's not dominated by the audience. It's not dominated by YouTube. It's not dominated by some algorithm. It's a mixture of everything. It's like people have to decide, okay, what, what kind of quality is this? Am I going to accept this? Yes or no? And um, I think that that is the main important key feature that YouTube needs that it doesn't have. Yeah. It, uh, it will allow for such a much better implementation yeah. of exactly the same thing. The, the, the important part of this is that right now we already have the content. We already know what YouTube is capable of. We just don't have a way of selling it yet. Yeah. And this is the way of selling. Um, there's also a, uh, a, a, a structure that I, uh, that I assume will, will need to change if this this is uh, brought to bear. Oh no, yeah, that that's that's um, very true. That's so very true. If, if 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 that is true, could you maybe uh, talk to us about about how the structure of, of YouTube would, would then change? What what would that look like? Okay, um, so the the I think the the main category it will have three category uh, categories which in videos will, will fall into one of three categories. Okay. So the one category will be sponsored content. This will be free content so that if you're coming up or logging onto YouTube, you don't need an account. You can just log into YouTube and then you can view the sponsored content. That will be content that a uh, uh, content creator has collaborated with a, a sponsor. We'll get into that a little bit more in, in a further topic with, with my advertising revised system. But okay, so we'll just get into that a bit later. But the main thing is it's a there'll be a cate category separate for that. It's sponsored content as we know it. As we know it, but it will be a separate. So, in, so in, in, in effect, the, those are the type of videos that uh, a content creator will have created, but with the the uh, monetary input of a of a third party advertiser, like Coca Cola, yes, for yes, example, yes, yes, would yes, yes. pay uh, con uh, um, content creator X to do a little uh, infomercial on a product or something, yes, yes, or exactly. a little review yes, on yes. a product or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. If exactly. I understand you correctly. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly okay. like the sponsored content okay. works now. It'll be free, <coughs> but we'll, we'll get into we'll get into it a little bit later. So then there's another category which will be the zero biscuits category. So okay. this means that you can also set your price as as a content creator for whatever video you're creating at zero biscuits. This means it will be free, so you don't need an account. So and you don't need credits. Obviously, you don't need biscuits to to buy, purchase it because it's because it's free. However, you're not allowed to comment on it. You're not allowed to rate it. Nothing. It'll just be a video for whatever reason you want to make a free video for, for promotional uh, uh, reasons, for promoting a series, the first couple of episodes yeah. are free, for example, or if you're, I don't know, a university wanting to just put up a video about saying, okay, you have an open day or just an announcement or you have some sort or, of organization. Or, or, or yeah, or I can imagine like, uh, um, like you're saying universities who have lectures or, or um, churches who have sermons that they put up that might want to have it free. Because obviously from what I gather more, your biscuit model will put the the value of the video completely in the hands of the creator. Yes, yes, that's right. True. Yes, that's the so point. So the creator yes. will be able to choose whether they want to have m a monetary value to that video or not. Yes, yes. Okay, yes, I understand. Absolutely. And then those free videos would be able to be viewed by anyone. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Whether they, regardless of whether they have an account. Yeah, yeah. Whether they have an account or okay. not. Yes, yes. Okay. This is to this is to just give access to people who are not sure about YouTube or they're not sure about the changing system. It's for the new, you know, it's for the, for, you, you're not entirely sure whether you're invested in, in, in YouTube or not, or you just wanted to use the uh, YouTube as a, a video hosting service to, mm -hmm. you want, you, you know, like you said, uh, like you said, wh whoever uh, organization wants to put out a news and bit of news 
for, for, for the audience and you can just go up and go uh, have use YouTube as sort of like a web, web app okay. uh, in your phone. Okay. And then the third category, this is now the important one where YouTube will move towards is the paid category. This will be the biscuit category. Okay. So these videos, you will have to need, you need an account, you need to be logged in. And if you, if you create an account, there will be a fee uh, first of like fifteen dollars, right? And then you automatically be granted twenty thousand biscuits. So that's the that's another main feature about the biscuit is that the conversion ratio has to be cheap, because YouTube works with viewing many videos instead of like a handful. It's you know it's not like so uh, it's a volume based yeah yeah it's a volume based thing. viewing system yeah yeah okay. so uh, so the ratio the conversion every dollar will give you like a thousand biscuits and that will so. That'll give you that gives you a uh, correct idea of like how how many it's 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 a flexible system of charging for mm. videos. So if you're gonna put out many, mm. and then so as a uh, if you if you're logging in as as a, uh, as a as a viewer now you have a, a viewer's account you paid your you paid your uh, your initial fee and then how the biscuits will work further is that they will be put into your bank your biscuit bank, and then there they will stay like indefinitely. Uh, unless you use them, then they'll just stay there. So it's not a subscription service. It's use as you want to use when you want to use it. So it's not like uh, every month you give in something and then you can use some. No, you, you put it up, you load up credit and you use it if you, if you want to use and it. And you can uh, upload credit at any time. Yeah, at right? any time you can upload credit. There's no like, there's no specifications to it. It's exactly like a wallet uh, yeah. that you can just, that you use digitally. Yeah. Okay. And um, I can also assume that, you know, w with this new model will come uh, many advantages to, oh, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, 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 to no. the change in system. I mean, I, I can think of a, a, a couple, um, for example, like for filtering, for example, mm, you yeah, know, definitely, currently yeah. uh, the current YouTube model, uh, you know, whether you're logged in or not, anyone can comment on videos and, you know, you get people who troll uh, and, and leave bad comments on, on videos. Uh, aren't really contributing to a conversation on the video. Um, maybe explain a bit to, to the viewers and to the rest of us how um, having the biscuit model will help to weed out those people who are trolling. Yeah, 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 the, yeah. It's, uh, um, it's, not it's not only just it's not only just trolls who, who are coming up and just want to, they just want to disrupt the community or disrupt the video and discredit it and just, just for the sake of doing it. They don't actually contribute anything there. They're being on purpose, you know, they're being difficult on purpose. So nobody wants them there. Mm -hmm. Like, don't feed the trolls, like, don't, you know, it's a thing, nobody wants them there. So a good part of this will be that if you have a pay gate, like the biscuit model, which means you have to pay for a video before you can have access to it. So, okay, let's go into that a little bit. So the, the system will then swap over from clicking on a video right to uh, it won't be clickbait because if you click on a video it'll have like an introduction before the video so every let's say 10 minutes of actual video length you'll have a minute to explain like an in intro introduction video which will say okay listen this video is about this and this and this or it's this series you, you know uh, the series that we covered this and this and that then you will have the option of unlocking a video it won't be per view as well sorry i haven't okay. mentioned that it won't be per view once you've unlocked the video with your with your biscuit, the biscuits goes to to whatever um, the price the the content creator has, has set, and then you you will have access to that video. You can rewatch it as many times as you want. So it won't be view based. It won't <coughs> be click based. It will it will be ba based on not uh, unlocking the video. Yeah, 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 yeah unlocking. And if I understand correctly uh, from what you said, there is, there is a uh, a minute per 10 minute total yes, video yes, length yes, yes. that the content creator has to create the sort of intro. Yeah, 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 and that yeah. intro is free, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yes. As you, so if you click on the video, the intro will play. Okay, so you, you have the opportunity to watch the intro, which yes. is free, Yes, yes. and the content creator is then responsible for uh, convincing you convincing you to watch the video, because after yes, the, yes, yes, let's yes. say, 10 seconds of intro, you will then get a pop-up saying buy video, and then you can continue. Yeah, yeah. Well, once you unlock the rest of the, the rest of the video, the rest of the video. Yeah, yeah, the rest of the video. And then will you be able to go back and rewatch the? Yes, the yes, video yeah, again? yeah, yeah. As, okay. many, as many times as you want. Okay, yes. so once you've unlocked. Yes, it. it's not per view. It's as many times as it's per video. So okay, okay. So okay. yes, that's uh, that's something important. Um, and to uh, yeah, like that's the, that's the that's the premise. Now we're looking at 
a potential way to lock off people who, are, who want to come in with a negative intent, wanting to disrupt the video. It happens all the time, especially on like popular videos where yes. people just jump in and they just be difficult. And some of the worst things are like the, when we get into the exploits of the industry, you get into the, the, the problem of like bots, where you have people and companies selling views, selling clicks, selling stuff like this to boost a video's like weight or you know, relevancy in the algorithm to boost the entire channel. And this has been a huge problem in yes. the past. So now you can't do that because yeah. you'll have to tell the bot to buy the video and then... Which would then cost money. And which will only cost money account. and the only thing that will count is the one unlock yes then you have another bot that unlocks it just viewing the video over and over again will do nothing yes so that it will be a huge help to get rid of a lot of these these farms these click farms and these view farms and i mean it, even that is like that's an extreme because they are actually of the worst yes. rather than the trolls a couple of trolls are like eh, okay you can tolerate that but mass abuse systems where you just have i don't know hundreds of mm -hmm. comments that are just nonsense and it's linking to yeah. random rubbish and adverts and, and, and of course uh, uh, having that payment gateway kind of weeds out the, the chaff oh because, yeah, yeah yeah yes yes because yes. once you've paid for a video there, there's an investment involved yeah because you care and about you're also yeah, yeah, then yeah, yeah. less likely to leave uh, irrelevant comments yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely because even even if you have you approach it from the angle that oh it's cheap you know it'll be cheap i mean you can you can you, know, you can spend you know five biscuits which is what is it you know it's not even a it's not even a cent of a yes. dollar right but it still acts as a pay gate it yes. still works it still works yes obviously the higher the price the, the more restrictive it is but the principle stays exactly the same yes. so i think it will go um, it will go very far into helping get rid of just just filtering out the nonsense and the people and the abuse yes and then uh, um, another advantage i can think of is is uh, we briefly touched on it before we were talking about the capitalist system is how um, implementing a biscuit model will create natural competition in between videos so uh, please uh, maybe speak a bit to how how that could create an oh. environment of higher quality content oh yeah no that's that's absolutely true the another massive advantage of this is unfortunately right now youtube has this algorithm that is supposed to control everything this magic algorithm that's just supposed to fix everything and I mean, you know, we know how effective that is. It's, yeah, it's, it works and it doesn't work and it's all over the place. I mean, no one has control over this algorithm and it's, but the problem with this algorithm is as any system, right? As any system or any designed code or a machine that's going to come calculate something, you can figure out the exploit. The fact that uh, uh, YouTube is online 24 seven and so many millions of users, some people are going to figure out how to abuse the system and they've already have that it, the current system works with you have to have a 10 minute video where did that come from no one said anything no one said anything about that but it just people just realize that it has to be 10 minutes long to give it an extra boost people realize this really quickly and so what happens they realize that you have to do this you have to do that you have to click pay because it works and it and it promotes and it actually works your content has to be viral and it has to and you have to upload a lot and you have to upload uh, co content that is very related to what's very, you know, very yes, trending it, right now. It, it all seems like it's creating this this environment of, of you of have to do quantity it. over quality. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to do this and this and this and this. You can't do this and this and this and this. But if you have a capitalistic model that we have now, that we're, that I'm proposing with this biscuit system, that allows you to set the price, that gives you a competitive angle and a competitive edge. So that means the people will have to decide for themselves whether the kind of quality and the type of video that you're producing is worth the money that you're asking for. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that equals the playing field. That means more expensive projects like uh, film, for example, is now possible. You can charge a lot of biscuits for it and then have a big full, full, uh, full length film with, you know, with how much production quality because you'll make it back. And it'll have a system that it's, it's as you boost the quality, you boost the price. You pick up the price. Yes. If the if your quality goes down and it's just a sort of a update video, informative video, or it's not something that you put that much into, you can lower the price. Yeah. So it, it makes it way more flexible. Different type of 
uh, videos, different styles of videos, lengths, and all of that can compete now because yeah. they have a platform to compete. It's an open market. Yeah. I almost see it, it, it's uh, maybe another advantage that I'm seeing now is, is how this could um, encourage the, the indie movie market. People, oh, oh that, yeah, no, the it's, indie it's creators, perfect. It's perfect. You know, it's people perfect. who maybe have uh, great ideas for short stories or miniseries yeah. or even full length documentaries yeah, yeah, no, no, or abso movies absolutely. Uh, will be able to independently create their content put it on YouTube, determine what their value is, what they assign the value to, to the video is, and then uh, test the market. Yeah, absolutely. And the market will tell them whether what they're charging is fair yeah, or not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you, uh, and you have, and, and it's great because instead of not knowing where to go uh, charge for films or where, where are you supposed to make films and where you're supposed to put them up, YouTube is perfect platform for that. If you can come up with some sort of business model and financial model that works into that, like this one, because it's scalable, it's perfect. Mm. It's absolutely perfect. The environment is perfect for it. <coughs> With this financial model, it will be, it will be fantastic. We'll see a lot more of that, and that will become viable. Long videos, film projects, documentaries, series will become very viable now. Mm. So it will push the quality because you can scale the price. Yes. Because right now you can't. That, yes. That's just. And not because you're 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 appealing to uh, a very instead of trying to appeal to a small market yes yeah uh, yes. that maybe has a lot of money now you're appealing to a vast amount yes, of people with yes. less money yes yes but the resources are so much more because you know if you're paying uh, you're asking 10 people for a dollar you have ten dollars yeah. but ask one person for ten dollars is less likely to give it to you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. It's, it's it's almost that that idea and I like the fact that um, the, the capitalist free market economy works into it so well that you there's no barrier of, for entry for you as a filmmaker to make a movie. I mean, you obviously put up the costs beforehand to create the film, but you immediately have a platform that you can put your independent yes, film yes. on yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. view it to millions and millions of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to go to a production company, yeah, you don't nothing, have to go to a, yeah, yeah, yeah. to a distributing company to get your film yeah, yeah, yeah. out. So it, it also... Uh, in, encourages this idea of creativity it will absolutely and, and, and quality, quality 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 is the main thing because and you can charge more for it yes if it's better you can charge more for and it and the other and problem you will get paid and the other problem that you could see is that you know uh, because you're putting the the uh, uh, choice to um, assign value to these movies or these projects in the hands of the creator you might see but say but the creator can then just charge what he wants but because it's a free market economy you don't have to pay it you don't have to you pay. Don't it. Have to pay it. If so it's, if, you, if, if you're high, charging too much, no yeah, one's going to watch the it. The market right. will decide. That's what's so great about decide. it. It isn't yes. YouTube won't decide. The content creators won't decide, and the audience won't decide. The market itself will develop, and the internal economy will create itself. Yes. We will. Uh, it will. It will. It will develop over time, and people will. A standard will. Will be established of what people are willing to pay for for what kind yes. of content. Well, that's great. Um, Thank you, Coral. That's that's uh, uh, our first section. That is the finance section. It, again, it's called the biscuits model. Um, we will be attaching a, a PDF onto this video where we, we're going to go into much more details on every one of these topics. But just to give you a sneak peek on what's happening with the finance model, uh, we'll be back with you soon for the next section. Okay. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, welcome to section two of our update to YouTube. Uh, in this section, we're going to discuss the revised advertising model. Um, as we discussed yesterday, uh, there was three different ways that we were looking at updating YouTube. The first one was the biscuit model that we discussed yesterday. And in today's video, we will discuss the remaining two, uh, namely the free videos, as well as the sponsored content. Um, so let's start off with the free videos. Carl, please. Yeah. What do you? What right. exactly are the free videos All and right. how do they work? Okay, so as we mentioned, uh, uh, as we mentioned uh, uh, in the previous section, for the three categories, we discussed now the biscuit section for the uh, for the prices that will be set for the videos, and the free videos will essentially just be the videos that have a zero biscuit cost. Okay. So that will be promotional videos. Let's say you're just starting on YouTube, you want to build an audience, you have a couple of videos for free. That's just promotional content for your own channel, as usual. Like the first, maybe couple of 
episode of a series or you're introducing a new series or and so on and so forth. Idea of that being promotional content for yourself. All right. Or maybe uh, something that you would just want to use uh, YouTube as a video hosting platform. So it's just informative videos for maybe you're some sort of business and you just want to inform people what the business is and as part of your website and so on and so forth. As, as uh, a bunch of people use YouTube just So like for example, like a university might put their lectures yeah, yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think we mentioned this yesterday, church we, might as well. We, we touched on that. Yes, yeah, yes. Exa yeah, exactly. So that category would then be free videos. Yeah, those would just okay, be Okay, so free category videos. one, we have the biscuits. Yes. Which content creators would then say they would assign their value to their videos mm -hmm. and those are purchased. And then we have the free videos, which are basically open to a anyone, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That and then the sponsored content, which is also free. This also has a zero cost. And that would also be, of course, be able to be viewed by uh, anyone. You don't, need a, you don't need an account to log in because they don't have a cost. Okay. Right. So the sponsored content is uh, a, a group uh, of two branches. Okay. One, it's as cost sponsored content is running currently on YouTube. It's as the, uh, at the initiative of the YouTubers and the co content creators and the advertising companies themselves. It's a partnership where they link up and then they sell the or advertise a product in whatever they want, way they want. Whether it's mentioning it, reviewing it, doing a skit about it, uh, that's as it and is. And that's the, the, the current setup it where a lot of yeah, YouTubers yeah, yes, yeah. would say that this video is sponsored by, like we've mentioned, Coca-Cola before, um, where they would either contact Coca-Cola directly or Coca-Cola would contact them and then they would have some sort of yeah, yeah, collaboration. Yeah, 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 they would. And as I understand, those video, videos would also then be free videos. Yeah, they would, they would fall into this category, yes. Because currently now, yeah, there's no differ differentiation between free and not free, but in this model, obvi obviously, we have the biscuits, so it has, it has to have its own section. Mm. But it will, it will function the same. So it's a free video, obviously, because uh, we have, the money's coming in from the advertiser, so there's no problem. Who's yes. financing it? And it would also be, um, uh, you know, just a little advantage I'm seeing as you're speaking about this is that um, it would push uh, those content creators who are creating videos for biscuits to work on original content yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, no, I know it well. Um, because, like, uh, as um, as I mentioned now, that the, the the idea is to have the 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 content be split. So you will have sponsored content coming from either your own collaboration, your own initiative, um, or then you would have YouTube step in and then be a mediator in between in between the advertisers. Oh, okay, so it's, it's almost as if under the sponsored content you have two branches. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the first branch is uh, content that the creator and the advertiser would connect. Yeah, yeah, as it is now. As is. And then... The, the and it's almost a new one we're introducing yes, now, yes, yes, which yeah, is... Yeah where YouTube will be like a middleman, if I understand yeah, yeah, correctly, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's to do mo uh, mostly with the advertising infrastructure as a whole instead of just how the platform works. So YouTube will now step in as a mediator between, uh, between the companies and, the, collab uh, uh, and the, uh, the content creators to form these collaborations. Mm. Because there's so, there's so many advantage to, on advantages to this that I, I absolutely think that YouTube should have done this before. In fact, I don't even know. Maybe they're already doing it. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not even sure if they ever, ever well, have possibly done it before. But this will be like a whole initiative in order to make a shift away from just having either the uh, the advertisers and the content creators form collaborations on their own. That's their smart business, or just randomly advertising um, to YouTube stepping in deliberately forming these collaborations. Well, let's. That's the revised. Let's. Idea. Let's. Um, you mentioned that you, you saw a couple of advantages to this uh, new system. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of them. Um, uh, first one that I could see is the um, ability for not just advertisers, but the YouTube creators themselves as well to, to have more focused type adverts where it's more infomercial type adverts yeah, versus yeah. just, you know, the regular adverts we see on Yeah, TV. yeah, yeah. The, the hope is, the hope is um, that um, YouTube can connect advertisers that have content related to the YouTubers and the content creators. Like let's say for example, uh, a cooking show and the company that sells pots and pans. The idea is that it's related, like it's in the same content factor. The, the point of that is that it's you're, you're, you're focused on a specific target audience. Yes. Instead of just randomly advertising, it's people who are already invested. 
Mm. If they already watch a cooking show, they care about cooking, they're more likely to gonna be selling uh, buying your pots and pans if you are if you're selling them. It's almost advertising by proxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's almost as if you're you, you're gonna be fooling your audience in a good way, because no one likes to see advertising. I mean, we, we let's be honest. It's not the not, not forced, the best part. Not forced. On, not but forced, especially if you're not interested. Exactly. Not forced, and it shouldn't. If if you're not interested in a this product, way, if you if you're watching, like you're saying, a cooking channel, for example, you have um, Rachel Ray or whoever these uh, you know chefs are. They'll be preparing uh, their favorite dish in a certain pan or a certain pot, and at the end of the episode, whatever they're doing, they could just say, for example, that you know this. This episode was sponsored by these spots, and yeah. all these spots are yeah. good for this. And this yeah, and this it just make it, it makes more sense. Yes. YouTube should definitely step in and build like a, 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 a I don't know a group or set up a branch that focuses on this because it just makes so much sense. Thanks to YouTube having so many different content creators, in theory they will have a content creator and a YouTuber for every single product and service available. So they can actually cater to actually, anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, actually. Because it's not like you in TV or television as it worked in the past where you have a, a, a couple of channels, right? Yeah. Here you have hundreds and thousands of Correct. thousands of channels. It's not like a couple of hundred maybe channels. You have like thousands. Maybe then also um, uh, touch on the accountability that there could oh, be between. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, there's a security factor as well because uh, like we mentioned previously, uh, and we, we've, we've seen the effects of the apocalypse where it was the confidence of the advertisers was just not there. They don't know and they were scared about where the adverts going to land. They just don't know. They don't have control over it and neither does YouTube because of the, it's just pushed onto the algorithm. You know, where it goes now, nobody knows. That, I mean, that's... So you could get like... You, <laughs> it's you advertising, a, you know, roulette, you know, it's like... You, you could get a horrible uh, situation, yeah. for example, where... Uh, 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 a car brand sells car polish on a cooking channel. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's nice. That's okay. If that happens, that's okay. People will be just be like, okay, I'm not interested. But it can, you know, they, the scary stuff has happened before where it's just completely unrelated or something that really or, uh, is not or, or, advertising or friendly at all. Yeah, like an inappropriate video. Yeah, for yeah, any, a Coca-Cola ad put on it. Anything, and then anything. So, uh, so there's a real hazard there. But if you if you know if 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 these collaborations are collaborations are a focus instead of just let's have it the focus on just let's just put your ad on whatever now let's link you up with a content creator that that focuses on your content and now you have a name you have a number you have a face to put your product towards you can call them they can send you the video ahead of time and you can review it your advertising department can review it all this sort of stuff becomes available it makes way more sense yes and 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 also the advertisers, because they know exactly on what channel the adverts are going, they also have this um, uh, ease of mind and comfort in knowing exactly how many times their video was viewed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. They, 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 they have guarantees, they, they, yes. they, There's actual hard quantifiable evidence that they yeah, can yeah, take yeah. back to their marketing department and yes, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the reach, this is the target audience we reach. Yes, because, because Google already has that built in, the analytics where, they, where yeah, you can yeah, tell yeah. who's been viewing your video. Yeah, but the main thing there is that what you touched on is the fact that they know um, that these th this amount of views these amount of people were exposed to your product but with ad block you can remove that digital so extra but if it's the video itself you can't actually remove it there's remove no the way video, yes. so the guaranteed this is how many people saw your product and, and yes was exposed to it so yes yes it has it and uh, uh, the the final advantage i can think of which and one that i think is probably one of the most important ones is the ability that this new system would provide the small YouTube stars or the smaller channels oh, yeah. to have access to the bigger advertisers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, if, if YouTube acts as the middleman, right, and the mediator to set up these collaborations, because again, it, it, the idea is to focus on related content. It's not about how big your audience is because it doesn't actually matter. Like, as long as the, the audience that you do have is invested and cares about the product that's related, it's more important because you're most likely to get a sale yeah. instead of just let's just put it out there how many of these thousands of people are actually gonna maybe be interested now you're just uh, catering to a smaller group but they're gonna be interested because it's the topic it's more that they niche care advertising yeah it's more niche a advertising but it's focused so you're gonna get more sales yeah. it's, it's guaranteed and of course there's a, a, another advantage in the fact that the advertiser has 
also has complete control uh, in terms of their advertising budget. Because if they have a smaller channel, for example, that maybe oh, wants yeah. to do true, yeah. one small video yeah, 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 yeah. advertising a Coke product, we always use the same example, um, then they can choose to do so. But if there's a larger YouTube channel that they want to maybe have a series, they can, they're open yeah, yeah, to yeah. do that as well. So the opportunity is really limitless for the, for the YouTube creator and for the advertiser to, to take it as far or to yeah, keep yeah, it as far yeah, back yeah, as they yeah, wish yeah, yeah, yeah. to. The idea is just that YouTube acts as a as an instigator for these collaborations. Yes. But the details regarding price or quality or whatever, it should be up to the, the, the advertisers and the, the, the content creators. And of course, uh, like we mentioned first, in the split, there, there will still remain the opportunity for the YouTube stars to, to contact at, the yeah, yeah, yeah. At their own discretion, well, yeah, their yeah, own yeah. Discretion. As, as it is now, at their own discretion, it will still be available. Yeah. This extra leg is just added to help, yeah, 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 yeah. so that YouTube facilitates. It's to encourage, yeah, it's to facilitate and encourage Change. the process that we've already seen is, is way more effective than just advertising at at large yes. or at. And and now, unfortunately, we have to come to the, uh, you know, one of the most important questions, and that is uh, the the question of human nature. And uh, as we all know, and we've all been uh, subject to this, where people take advantage of systems. Oh, oh yeah, no. So, you know, I, I, I can, for example, imagine a scenario where a, a YouTube creator produces a sponsored content with the help of Coca-Cola, but then on his channel decides to assign biscuits to oh, okay. yeah, receive. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. how would that be prevented? Okay. So you can't stop them, unfortunately, unless, I don't know, maybe on YouTube side, if they re-implement it and you say it's a sponsored content, I don't know, maybe the details, they can maybe do something. But mainly, let's say they can, because they most likely will be able to. So they're trying to double down, essentially, on it. The, the main thing is that uh, YouTube will have a policy, first of all, that it's like you're not allowed to do that, so it will be against regulations. And then once that video goes up, the, the users will be, be able to, the viewers will be able to flag that content mm. and we'll get to the flags, we'll get to the revised flags. So if I understand you correctly, I, the, the basic idea is that um, original content that is created by an individual or a channel can be monetized yes, yeah. by the individual yes. through the biscuit model. Yes, yes. But any videos that are, that are put uh, on the advertising platform in the sense that it's either Sponsored free, content. It's either free, like a university or a church putting the yeah, videos yeah, yeah, yeah. on. It's free; they can monetize okay, that way. That's at their discretion. Yeah. That's at their discretion. Or, if videos are um, sponsored, sponsored by a third content. party, then under no circumstances may those videos yeah, yeah. be monetized in terms of the business. Yeah, yes, yes. So basically, in a nutshell, what we're looking at is we're looking at two av avenues of monetization, and you choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either you monetize through biscuits. Or you monetize through advertising. Yes, yes. And yeah. you're not the two are not allowed to. Yeah, be no, no. Cross. They're not allowed to be okay. the same thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You're not allowed. And to there are obviously ways and systems that we'll discuss in the next couple of sections yes. about how we'll get that will be protected. Yeah, but essentially they will be punished for that. Yeah, they okay. will be. Thanks, Carl. Uh, thanks for joining us for this section. The next section will uh, be up shortly. Um, until then, thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the next segment in our YouTube Fix. I'm here again with Carl. In this segment, we're going to discuss the revised punishment system. And uh, Carl, maybe a good place to start is, like always, to discuss the current setup that is going on at YouTube in All terms right. of punishment. How do they deal with people breaking their terms of use and policy? The, 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 the community, it's like a community guidelines uh, strikes, if you ever strike against your community guidelines. Okay, so. The, the main focus of it is if you get three strikes within a three month period, then your account gets deleted. So every time you have an account or, your, uh, or if you're on your account, you have a, a strike of breaking the community guidelines, you get one strike. So at the first strike, as far as I understand it, you cannot stream or you can't have a live streaming service that's canceled for you, that you don't have access to that. Mm -hmm. If you get another strike within this three month period, then you're not allowed to upload new videos for a, a period, I think it's two weeks or, so or something. And then the third one, again, if, it, if you happen to break the community guidelines again, um, you'll have your third strike within the three month period, your account gets terminated and completely deleted. Okay, so they basically on a three strikes you're out. Yeah, that's, that's, as, as, uh, that's as, as within far as- Within a three month period. Yes, as far as I understand, that's, that's how it is currently. Okay, and I understand obviously uh, we have a updated revised system on this uh, punishment model. Um, 
let's let's delve into that. W what do you suggest? How do we go about uh, revising this punishment system? All right. The um, the the idea that I came up with was uh, account freezing. Right. So the point of it is that it's a, it's a harsher punishment, but it's also not as severe because uh, with with this with this, this revised model, your the account can't be deleted. It, it instead works with a system where your account gets frozen temporarily for a set amount of time. Okay. So and it and it works according. There's no strikes, so you don't get you don't accumulate strikes. It's just once you uh, commit an offence, your account will be frozen. So when you when your account gets frozen, you uh, what what happens is all your videos gets privatized. So that means you can't get any revenue. No one can look at your videos. No one can watch them. So, it's so, 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 so in, a, in effect, if you go onto YouTube and you search for your channel, you will just find no nothing. results. Yeah, it will be nothing. But the YouTube admin will still be able yes, to have sure. access. So your account isn't removed. Yeah, it exists still. Yes. It, it still exists on YouTube servers. Yes, all your yes. videos are still safe. It's just made private so that you nor any of your subscribers or any new visitors can Could view visit any of it. your content. Yes, yes, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, so you won't receive revenue and you won't, it will be like a temporary shutdown. That's okay. kind of the idea. So that's why freezing. That's why freezing. And the, the, the part two of the freezing is that um, how the system um, is, is directed is that now you have, uh, let's say you get punished for um, some, some uh, offense that you, uh, some community guideline that you broke, some offense that's reported against you, it's one week. That's how the severity is just lengthwise. So first your account just gets frozen for one week. You get notified, your account gets frozen for one week. And then after that one week, you have a cool down period. So the cool down period is exactly the same length of how long your account got frozen for. But then this cool down period is the time to check whether you're going to commit another offense. So after, so if I understand correctly, if your punishment period is for one week, after the week your your content will be made live again, you'll be able yes. to interact with your yes, channel yes. again, your viewers will be normal. Able, as normal. normal yes. But the cool down week is for YouTube to just keep an eye on you to yes. see yeah, if yeah, yeah. you're going to break another yes, yes. Yes, yes. Term of service. Because then it can be seen as you're deliberately breaking the rules. You're uh, trying to find an exploit. You're trying to abuse the system. Yes. Um, so what happens? Hap what happens in the case that someone reoffends in the cooldown? Okay. The, regardless of what kind of severity of the offence, if it's uh, uh, your your account will then uh, have another freezing period immediately once it's been found to commit the offence, but it will be double what your previous. Um, freezing period was. Okay. So let's say it was one week, now it will be two weeks. If it was two weeks, it will now be four weeks. If it was a month, it will now be okay. two months. Yeah, yeah it will be now. But that months. only applies that if you re-offend within the cooldown yes, period. Yes, yes, yes. If you offend again, but you're outside of the cooldown period, then whatever appropriate penalty yes, applies yes, yes. will then that apply would be to your for that time. length, yes. All right, yes, all right. Yeah. And then the idea is then the cooldown period will be exactly the same length. So it will be then two weeks of cooldown. So then it will be for two weeks you have to be careful. I see. So, so it will get so worse you as you keep repeating. So y if you have someone that keeps repeating offenses, they might start at one week um, freezing yeah, yeah. and then they might have one week of then cool down. If they repeat in the cool down period, now they'll from that date they'll be blocked for two weeks yeah, yeah. and then they'll have two weeks of cool down. Exactly. Yeah. And if, if they re Offend again in the two it's weeks of cool down. It's they'll month. have a month, a month, and yeah, yeah, and then a month of cool down. A month down. of cool down, yeah. And when they stop, when yeah. they stop offending, the the channel will then just resume as normal. Yeah, it will just resume as normal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can actually see a couple of advantages to the system that you guys know we always try to discuss the advantages, um, and that is that this system would um, foster this environment where repeat offenders will start getting harsher and harsher punishments. Yeah. But those people who accidentally made mistakes or had accidentally had their videos flagged uh, for or, um, copyrighted content or breaking terms of service or yeah, whatever. this is mostly with the with the uh, community uh, guidelines being yes, so more serious. People, but yes, yeah. people in those ca in that category will maybe, for argument's sake, have a week of freezing, yeah, yeah, yeah. as in a week of cool down, but after they come out of the cool down period, they can continue as normal. Yeah, they'll, they'll have learned what, what was the mistake and they'll yes. not do it again. That's the yes. point. But if you're deliberately trying to find some sort of wraparound or some sort of exploit or some sort of break, then it'll just get worse and it'll double down on how bad it is. Because during the freezing, you won't make any money. Like yes. your account will be gone, essentially. 
All right, and then if I understand correctly, um, this will obviously be up to YouTube, but there will be a hierarchy in terms of the different terms of service and how it relates to the freezing time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that will be the, uh, um, the, the offense, what kind of offense is committed and how severe it is. So the, so the severity of the offense yeah, yeah, yeah. will we'll determine, determine how long the yes. initial yeah, freezing yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, so a more severe event uh, um, breach we'll might have a month, yeah, 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 whereas yeah. a small breach might have a day, yeah, yeah. Or, for example. Or whatever. Or a week, or whatever um, the case might be. I think with the only exception being, of course, YouTube can step in at any time and then decide, well, this on this channel is deliberately doing, um, uh, violating terms of service on purpose and they're doing like, I don't know, some extreme, you know, uh, they're, they're obstinate being, in yeah, some Yeah, way. they're being like, they're deliberately breaking it. So then YouTube obviously can step in at any time and decide on their own discretion. It is their platform. They're Correct. allowed to yeah. uh, act how they wish. So. Obviously, they can still delete the channel if they decide. Okay, listen, this person is just being completely toxic. Let's just All right. Let's just get rid of them. But that's that's the main. Yeah, that's right. Well, thank you, Carl, uh, and thank you as always for joining us. Thank you. We'll be back in the next segment uh, for for more suggestions on how we can fix YouTube.